the sand man's hour, where the sparks go. One night when the wind was blowing, it was clear and cold outdoors. A cat and a dog, who were very good friends, sat dozing before a fireplace. The wood was snapping and crackling, making the sparks fly. Some flew up the chimney, others settled into coals in the bed of the fireplace, while others flew out to the heath and slowly closed their eyes and went to sleep. One spark ventured further out upon the heath then fell upon near the cat. It made a jump which awakened the dog. That almost scorched me, your fur coat. Miss Cat, said the dog. No, indeed, answered the cat. I am far too quick to be caught by those silly sparks. Why do you call them silly, asked the dog. I think they're very, very good to look at, and they help to keep us warm. Yes, that is all true, said the cat. But they that fly up the chimney on a night like this certainly are silly, when all it, they could all be warm and comfortable inside. For my part, I cannot see why they fly up the chimney. The spark that flew so near the cat was still winking, winking, and she blazed up a little. It a mark the cat made. If you knew the reason, you would not call us silly, she said. You cannot see what we do, but if we were to look up the chimney and see what happens, we are fortunate enough to get out of the top. That would not, and you would not call us silly. The dog and the cat were very curious to know what happened, but Spark told them to look and see for themselves. The cat was very curious and told the dog to look first. So he stepped boldly up to the fireplace and thrust his head in. He quickly withdrew it, but his hair was singed, which made him cry, and ran to the other side of the room. The cat smoothed a smooth, soft coat and was very glad he had been so wise. He walked over the door and urged him to come nearer, the dog to come nearer the fire, but he realised why a burnt child dreads the fire and remained at a safe distance. The cat walked back to the spark and continued to question it. We cannot go into the fire, she said. Now pity, pretty spark, do tell us what becomes of you when you fly up the chimney. I'm sure you become soot and that you cannot make you make you long to get and it cannot take you long to get to the top. Oh, you're very wrong, said the spark. You're far from being that when we fly up the chimney, for once we reach the top, we live forever sparkling in the sky. You see it? You look up the chimney, all your brothers and sisters who have been lucky and reached the top, winking, winking at us almost every night. Sometimes the wind blows them away. I suppose there are nights where you cannot see the sparks shine. Who told you all that? said the cat. Did any sparks ever come back and tell you they could live forever? Oh, no, said the spark. But we can see them, can we not? Of course, we all want to shine forever. I said you were silly, said the cat, and now I know they are not sparks, you see. They are stars in the sky. You can call them anything you like, replied the spark, but you make the bright light. You, we you make the bright lights, you see. Well, if you take my advice, said the cat, you stay right in the fireplace for once. You reach the top of the chimney outside that you go. So I see twinkling far above the chimney and never could reach, you could never reach them. The spark could not be convinced. Just then, someone opened the door and the draft blew the spark back into the fireplace. Into, in a few minutes, it's flying the other toward the top of the chimney. The cat watched the fire a minute and then looked at the dog. So it may be all right. May we right after all, said the dog. Let's go out and see if we can see it. The cat stretched himself and blinked. Perhaps it's true, she replied. Anyway, I'll go with you and look.